All right, guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the trick to clearing your hips in the downswing. I'm gonna show you what I showed a recent student of mine to help him really get his hips moving and clearing in the downswing. There's one key trick we talked about. I'm gonna show you what that is. There's two little sub moves that we're gonna talk about that are important, and one really good drill that I'm gonna show you. Let's dive in. Okay, so recently I had a student come in who had watched some of our videos and said, Eric, you know, when I make my swing, I'm really struggling to get my hips clearing in the downswing. It's like, I kind of feel like I'm like stuck in mud. I just can't get my lower body going. Can you help me clearing my hips? I said, absolutely I can. Let's take a look at your swing. And when we looked at his swing and I put him up next to Max Homa, and we don't have his visual, but I'll kind of show you what he looked like here at impact, we noticed that he had about zero rotation. So from the down the line here, compared to Max Homa, you can see the Max Homa version, how he's got plenty of hip rotation, rib cage rotation. He's well open to the target. The student that I had come in, and this may be you as well, at impact looks something like this. Zero hip rotation, very stood up at impact. And he struggled, right, with clearing the hips. And what did that lead to? Well, it led to inconsistent contact, no power, very little club face control, just inconsistency day to day out in the golf course. And obviously if you were to look at Max Homa or the good players who have that pelvis and rib cage rotation, they've got the opposite things. They hit the ball very solid. They've got great club face control and great power. And that's obviously what he wanted as well. So we looked at him, we looked at Max and said, okay, yes, clearly we need to open the pelvis and the rib cage. How do we do it? There was two key mantras. Now the first thing, and I'm gonna show you a drill here in a minute, has to do with how the trail leg works. So the trail side, the trail knee and the hip during the downswing. If you get that part correct, right? Which is if we draw a line up through the toes, up vertical, we'll put this on the screen, you'll see some images as we go. If you can keep your knee and your hip inside that line as you work through the ball, it's gonna be very easy to clear your hips. Now, if that's true, unfortunately for you and for the player that I had and me and all of us golfers, if you don't do that, meaning if your knee and or your hip go forward of that toe line this way, you're never gonna be able to clear your hips. Always gonna be stuck in mud. As soon as the trail side works too far in towards the ball like this, the hips stall, the upper body works up and back, early release, poor contact, et cetera. So it's absolutely essential that we learn how to do that. I'm gonna show you in a moment. Now in with that, and sort of the mantra that I gave him, when we were looking at Max Homa and these good players at Impact and him, I said, hey, let's start with a general feel before we talk about the trail side of where your belt buckle points. If you wanna clear your hips more, you must get your belt buckle to point more towards the target and sooner. If you wanna clear your hips more, you must get your belt buckle pointed more towards the target sooner. If we look at Max Homa, Adam Scott, these players at impact, where's their belt buckle pointed? Several feet in front of impact. My student, who I'll pose here, where was his belt buckle pointed? Straight at the golf ball. No hip rotation, not clearing my hips. Hips pointed several feet forward by impact, some hip rotation, clearing the hips. Now to take it a step farther, we have to make sure that you continue to point your belt buckle not only at the target, we'll show you Max Home and Adam uh, Scott, I drew a little yellow line where their flag is. And notice when they finish their swing where their hips are pointed. Where are they pointed? At the target, right of the target, or left of the target? They're all pointed left of the target. So the first mantra I gave this gentleman was, hey, for us to clear your hips, for we're talking about right side, let's focus on getting your belt buckle pointed more forward throughout the downswing. More forward at impact and more left of the target. In fact, what we did, if you pick a target out there, as I said, by the time you work through the ball, I almost want you to have the sensation that at impact, your belt buckle is gonna be pointed like at the target. Now, there ain't no way we were getting his belt buckle at the target, but if you're coming from zero hip rotation and you wanna clear it where it points a little bit in front, you have to feel as though your hips are way more open way earlier. How much? To the point where when you look at video, they're pointed just like the model pros. Now for me to get him to that point and what you might need to feel to clear your hips, literally we picked a target 20 to 30 yards left of the flag. I said, I want you to feel like your belt buckle points there before you're done with your swing. 
So the belt buckle and where it points, the good version is get it at and left of the target. The bad version is swinging through where your belt buckle is at the ball, right? No clearing of the hips. Belt buckle left of target. So first thing, just a general mantra, let's feel the belt buckle point at the target by impact, way exaggerated, and about 20 yards left through impact. Let's go ahead and hit with that. So belt buckle more left. And again, the general sensation with all these pieces is how far do I need to push the exaggeration of the feel just to get to neutral? I'm not confused on what I need to do. Him and I both wanted to clear the hips more. We were clear on that. The question is how do we do it and how much? The how much part is as much as it takes to look normal. So easy, simple mantra, belt buckle at the ball bad, belt buckle at and left of target good. Now, you might do that all day long and never make any progress if you don't get this trail side moving through correctly. Let's talk about what that means, how to fix it in the drill next. Okay, so the trail side working through, right? Here's kind of the mantra. Imagine I put this little stick in the ground, which is similar to the drill we had. When we were inside, I actually had it about parallel to the ground, just below his kneecap. That's how I actually had the drill set up. For here, I just put it into the, put a lime rod into the ground there, but you wanna have an object over your toe line, just in front of your knee here. And I just put a club down my toe line for visual reference. So when you're doing this, you can have a club down your toe line, and let's draw that line on the screen again. We don't wanna have the knee or the hip break forward of that line ever. We'll show you Adam Scott and Max Homa on the screen here as examples. I draw the line up the toe line. When they make their downswings, how do they do that? Their knee stays inside of that line and their trail hip stays inside of that line. As soon as your knee breaks forward of that line, your hips are gonna kick in, you're gonna stand up, your hips are gonna stall. As soon as your right hip would break forward of that line, hips kick in too much, stand up, stall. We focus a lot on getting the lead side cleared around, and that's good, we should. But a different way to do it is getting this trail side through. Said different, if you get your trail side through correctly, which I'll talk about feels, the lead side will get around automatically. It also means if you do this trail side poorly, that lead side has no chance. So we have to get the, the trail side through. To begin with, we have this object, and again, you could put something in front of your toes, maybe like a table or something. Even stand up now and kind of put something down your toe line as a visual, or look at your toes, and make some downswings where your knee never gets outside that line. Now, if we focus on the knee, we typically can sort of get everything else correct. So I started with him and say, hey, instead of your knee popping way forward, this is what he looked like. Okay, so no hip turn, knees popping way in like this early extent. I'm exaggerating, but you kind of get the picture here. What we want to have the knee to look like is the right knee should be moving in towards the left. So you want to get your knees close together. Knees far apart, moving in towards the ball, bad. Right knee close to the left and moving towards the target, good. Okay, so when we start this, obviously I want to miss this object. I want to get my right knee moving in towards my left knee. That's going to be piece number one. And now if I can do that with my right knee moving in, you're going to notice it's easier for you to be able to clear your hips. It's easier to be able to keep hip depth and not have that early extension in towards the ball. So same thing, draw the line up over the toe line, have that visual, feel the right knee working in close to the left, like I'm squeezing the right knee in towards the left inside of that toe line. And if I do that correctly, when I get done, I'm feeling like my belt buckle is not only pointed at the target, but it's actually pointed left, left of the target. So we worked on this for a little bit, right? We're talking back and forth. We're looking on swings at swings on video. We're going over the details, but that's the general feel, right knee in towards the left. As we work through the details of this, we also said, hey, notice as your right knee's feeling in towards your left, the knees feel very close. Feels like the kneecap is pointed towards the target. The, the trail hip, the right hip, also feels like it stays down and in. Bad would be the trail hip working up and out. Knee goes forward, hip goes up and out, that's bad. As my knee goes towards the target, my hip stays down and in. 
So we're kind of feeling with the club across, the hip stays down and in as the right knee's in towards the left, where's the hip? The hip also, look at the max homa, the hip also stays nicely inside of that line the whole time. That's what gives you the hip depth. If your right hip stays back and in, where's your left hip gonna be? Way back, right? There's your sort of two cheek hip depth. So same feels here, knee and hip stay inside the toe line, right knees towards the left, right hip stays back and in. Same feels. And listen, did I get this guy who came in, nice gentleman, to look like Max Homan one hour? No, I did not, okay? But did we go from this, no hip turn, knee in, to about halfway in between? Yes, we did. Did he hit the ball more solid because of that? Yes, farther, better contact, etc. Now he, just like you, if you wanna do that, are gonna to need to continue to practice that over time. But you should be able to record yourself and make noticeable differences right away if you exaggerate enough. So whether you wanna keep it pretty simple and have the belt buckle point left of the target, or go into some of these other feels of the right knee in towards the left, the right hip stays in and towards the target. As I'm doing that, as the right hip stays in and towards, show me, me and Max doing this, my buddy, my left hip is also deep, right? You might feel your left hip's deeper than normal as you work through, but to clear your hips, you have got to get the trail side working through correctly. If you have any questions on this, guys, let me know in the comments down below. Consider liking this. Uh, that really helps us. Maybe share this with a friend. Subscribe if you haven't, all that stuff. And as always, appreciate you guys watching.